Hello, my name is Glenn Bader with Bader International. Today we're going to check out the showroom. We've got a variety of Harley Davidsons. We have some Triumphs, BSAs, and a variety of other bikes to, uh, to show you. So stand by and we'll check them out. Today we're going to be talking about some of the bikes that we actually have in the showroom. And of course, our, our showroom is ever evolving because our, our main goal is to, to get motorcycles in and back out to uh, our, our clients that, uh, that they're eventually going to go out and enjoy them uh, instead of sitting here in my showroom. But let's talk a little bit about what we have. This is a 1941 Harley-Davidson WLDR. This motorcycle was restored by my very good friend David Serafan and it's completely redone and as you can see it's set up as a racer uh, but it is set up to where if you do want to put a generator on it you can go ahead and put headlight tail light on it and use it for a street bike as well but again this is a very fast little 45 and it'd be a lot of fun to own. This motorcycle is a 1959 Harley Davidson Panhead. As you can tell, the bike is not, is not in original condition. It's been fully customized by my very good friend, Landy Brackey. He did a beautiful job on the bike. It has a candy blue paint scheme on it. Uh, the front end, the Springer, original Springer has been fully chromed. Engine obviously has been completely rebuilt. And he has a beautiful set of upsweep pipes on it. And the entire motorcycle is ready to go. It's just a beautiful, beautiful bike. This motorcycle is a 1943 Harley-Davidson Model U. Back in 1943, the war production was basically taking the majority of the motorcycles uh, and using them for the war effort. So to actually purchase a civilian motorcycle in those years was very, very difficult. This is the flathead engine. Uh, it is a 74 cubic inch, uh, obviously a V-twin. And what's interesting about the bikes in 1943, they were not using a lot of chrome because, again, all that stuff was going to the war effort. So the bikes were very subdued with regards to their finish. And again, depending on what color they were painting on that day for the military is the color that you would receive on your motorcycle. This gorgeous motorcycle is a 1964 Harley-Davidson FLH Panhead. It was also called the Duo Glide because it has the hydraulic front end as well as the rear shock absorbers with a swing arm. In 1957, they ended the hardtail frame and they came up with the, uh, the swing arm, which again is a much better bike to ride. This bike is, is nicely restored. It has a variety of, of different accessories, spotlights, headlights, the, uh, the, the bar that uh, is, uh, supports the uh, handlebars, and again, just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Harley-Davidson produced a number of engine designs through the years and the most pinnacle and the most desirable engine that they, they ever built was the Harley-Davidson Knucklehead. This is a 1939 pre-war year engine, a complete bike of course, and it's an all original bike with the exception of maybe a, a repaint on the sheet metal. The bikes are very, very desirable with regards to the collector world and just having one in my lineup is a real treat. The bike is a great runner, has all original items such as the speedometer, handlebars, headlights, and so on. And again, just a very, very fine bike and uh, would be a top bike in any collection. 1930 America was in the grips of the Great Depression and Harley-Davidson was trying to work through all of the hard times that they were going through. Now with this 1930 Harley-Davidson Model V, they actually tried to trim the fat a little bit and they went to items such as the forged I-beam front suspension and instead of the earlier more expensive type tube front forks. But they were trying to spiff things up. They went ahead and came up with the dual headlights in 1929. So it was a 1929 and 1930 item only. And also the engine, being that it is a, a flathead design, was less expensive to produce because of, there's less moving items in the engine itself. So again, it's a, it's a great tried and true engine design, but it, it, and they also had some other items such as the rear exhaust, which was a two year item only, uh, 29 and 30, sort of a rocketeer type design. But again, it was a beautiful bike. It helped Harley Davidson pull through the hard times of the depression. And again, just a very, very nice motorcycle in the lineup of Harley Davidson. In 1941, Harley-Davidson was brought into the war and the actual U.S. military contracted Harley to produce the WLA. This is the 45 cubic inch flathead engine 
and this is a 1942 model which they actually produced over 80,000 of these bikes. They actually produced over 30,000 bikes in parts only. And as you can see by the bike has a beautiful scabbard for the Thompson submachine gun. We have three magazines for that gun as well. It also has the deep water fording kit on the engine as well as the gearbox. And it's also set up with the radio suppression kit as you can see all of the grounding throughout the engine. Along with the, all of the accessories, we have a bedroll on the back as well as a flare kit and the beautiful saddlebags as well. But all stock OEM for, uh, for Harley-Davidson military bikes. As mentioned earlier, Harley-Davidson's most successful design was the knucklehead and this is the very last year for it. This is the 1947 Harley-Davidson FL knucklehead, which is the 74 cubic inch engine. And as you can see, the bike's been personalized. It is a rider, and uh, again, it's very, very stock, very original, but a little bit more chrome. They didn't actually put the chrome on the rocker boxes on the engine. It has 16-inch wheels front and rear, Springer front end, the 3.5 gallon Fat Bob gas tanks, Linker carburetor, the 2-up buddy seat, and the very typical period correct saddlebags. 1957 saw the very first year for the long running Harley Davidson Sportster. I have two beautiful examples of the Sportster. This one that I'm sitting on is actually an all original paint, blue and white Sportster with engine number 1114, meaning that this is the 114th Sportster ever produced. Being that it's an all original paint bike, along with being the low engine number like that, makes this bike very, very rare. This beautiful example is a 1957 Sportster with the pepper red and black paint scheme. This restoration came out of our shop uh, just recently. Matter of fact, we did the 20 part restoration series on this very motorcycle. This is engine number 3100, and as you can see, it's beautifully done. We spare no expense on doing an absolute perfect nut and bolt restoration on the entire motorcycle. Everything from the fit and finish of every bolt, every nut, throughout the motorcycle is absolutely perfect. The bike is ready for AMCA judging. And again, this is a bike that uh, would make an excellent bike for any collection. This motorcycle is a 1958 Harley-Davidson Sportster. What makes this bike so special is this is an all-original paint motorcycle. In 1958, they only produced 579 of the Harley-Davidson Sportsters. And this one actually has the, what I'll call, special order color. It was a saber gray metallic and white paint scheme. And again, the bike is just in fabulous condition. And for being almost 63 years old, it's as nice as you'll ever find one. It's all original and it's just as perfect as can be. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up today's uh, show and tell, uh, talking about this 1923 Harley-Davidson Model J. What's interesting about this bike, it was actually used in one of the most recent um, cannonball runs, uh, so the engine's been completely gone through. It has more modern wheels to accept the more modern tires, but this bike ran over, I think, right around 2,500 miles on a rally it actually took first in its class, so it's a really cool bike, a lot of fun to ride, and very dependable. And the J models actually went from about 1916 all the way through 1929. We sincerely hope you like what you saw today, and make sure you hit the like and subscribe, and check us out on BaderInternational.com. We've got plenty more to show.